you know, some people will say that screen recordings and tutorial style YouTube videos are dead. And that's just not true. Maybe the people who say that just aren't that good at them. However, I think think doing the bare minimum of recording your screen, throwing a voiceover on it, and then just uploading it to YouTube it's not doing you any favors. For example, if you have a lot of stuff and clutter on your desktop, it might be distracting to the viewer. And if you don't record your screen at the highest resolution that you can, you risk having pixelated or fuzzy screen recordings. So step number one in creating next level screen recordings and tutorials is to declutter your desktop and record your screen at the highest video resolution that you can. That way you can zoom in on certain portions of your screen when you're editing. And we'll get into that in just a moment. My name is Meredith and here on this channel, I'm here to help you look good, sound good, and feel good on camera so you can build a thriving YouTube channel. And I have been doing screen recordings and tutorial style videos since pretty much day one. I did used to just slap a screen recording with a voiceover up on my channel and I thought doing the bare minimum was good enough because after all, I saw other people doing the exact same thing on YouTube. And that is until I started getting comments from people saying, I can't even see your mouse. I don't even know what you're clicking on. I can't follow the steps that you're showing me, which kind of defeats the purpose of recording your screen to begin with. So over time, I have stepped up my game through the hundreds of screen recordings that I have done at this point. And although there are a lot of options out there for recording your screen, I use ScreenFlow almost all of the time because the recording functions and the editing functions of ScreenFlow are absolutely out of this world. And this video is not sponsored by ScreenFlow in any way. Although if you haven't checked it out, I put a link down in the description below. I just want to make sure you know exactly what I'm using here. And let's be honest, if the screencasts and tutorials you create are hard to follow for the viewer, then your retention on your videos is not going to be good. The watch time is not going to be good. And then all the time and energy you put into creating the video is going to fall flat. Like the video is just going to flop because it's not helpful or useful to people. So it is worth it. Even if you're a beginner, especially if you're a beginner to use really good software for this. I sometimes use Descript to record my face and my screen at the same time, but sometimes it's just a little bit too basic for the edit that I want to create with my screen recording. And I'll sometimes use Snagit from TechSmith if I'm just needing to record my screen for a little bit of B-roll. Anyway, I'll link to all of that software down below this video so you can play along with me here. So you've decluttered your desktop, you're recording your screen at the highest resolution that you can, and once your screen recording is recorded, as you can imagine, a lot of the up leveling comes with the editing. So of course, at the very least, you're going to edit out the long pauses, the awkward silences, or really anything in the recording that doesn't help the viewer get a result faster, get to the whole purpose of the video faster. That doesn't mean you have to edit out every single breath that you take or every single time you say, um, there seems to be a fine line when it comes to pacing a screen recording tutorial video and pacing a regular talking head video because I have tried to like whip through my tutorials so fast that I'll then get comments from people saying, could you please slow down? I can't follow you here. So there's no real formula for that, but consider your audience. Don't waste their time, but also don't make it go so fast that they can't follow what you're doing. It can also be helpful to the viewer to highlight your cursor and your clicks or even add an arrow if you can so people literally know where to look on your screen. And remember, a lot of people, possibly most people watching your videos are watching them on a phone. So while you might be able to see it nice and big on your editing screen, your viewer might not be able to find that teeny tiny little arrow when you're clicking it. ScreenFlow has so many options for this up in the panel on the right hand side. You can highlight your mouse, you can highlight your click, you can create a little radar animation anytime you click something. You can also add a sound effect, like add the actual click sound effect. Sometimes I do that and sometimes I don't. Honestly, if there's a lot of clicking going on, it gets kind of annoying to listen to after a while. But my favorite way to do this is with a call out in ScreenFlow. So I can just select the area that I want to be highlighted on the screen. I can make it bigger. I can animate it in and out so that it's really easy to see 
what I'm doing on the screen. I also try to remember when I'm recording to give a verbal cue of where my mouse is or where I'm clicking. For example, like I just did a few moments ago, I'm going to say up in the top right or on the right hand side, blah, blah, blah. That is a recording habit that I just kind of picked up for myself. And whenever I hear somebody say, oh, I love following your tutorials. Thank you for breaking it down so simply. I honestly think that recording habit is one of the reasons why I get those compliments. Not to toot my own horn or anything. And if you've learned something new so far, hit that like button and make sure you follow me here for more video creation tips just like this. But if you're creating your screen recordings and tutorial videos to build your thriving YouTube channel and online business, my best YouTube audience growth tip is coming up, so stick around. But another way to up-level your screen edits is anytime you have a window or an area on your screen to highlight zoom in on it. And I already touched on this a little bit, but this is where having that higher resolution screen recording comes in handy. So the videos that I'm uploading to YouTube are 1920 by 1080 resolution. And my decade old dinosaur of an Apple Thunderbolt display is a 27 inch 2560 by 1440. So I'm not even able to record my screen in 4k, but it's still bigger than 1920 by 1080. So I can zoom in a little bit. And the way that I found this info is up in the top left click on the Apple icon, go to about this Mac. It will tell you about the Mac that you're using. Look how underpowered this thing is and go over to display. So I'm using an external display with a Mac mini. So it's telling me exactly what my display is, how big it is and what the resolution is. I also like to take the teeny tiny bit amount of extra time to add an action if I'm moving around the screen or zooming in and out. This is really easy in screen. Flow. It just makes moving around the screen and pinpointing different areas a lot more fluid and less choppy. I also set up my stream deck with a bunch of screen flow shortcuts and I'm still finessing how that all works. But if you want a video on that in the future, let me know down in the comments. Now, when it comes to using screen recordings and tutorial style videos to build your thriving YouTube channel, building a library of binge worthy videos is the most powerful way to do that. And the good news is I have a video explaining exactly how to become bingeable on YouTube so that you attract new viewers and new subscribers with every single video that you publish. So I will queue it up here for you and I've linked to it down below as well.